What's up, 380 subscribers? My name is Chillmonger. This book is Marauders, and it continues this comic book week of just good comics coming out. We're going to begin with speculation. They're on Mars, and she says, Emma does to the kids, that this is where we grow the human medicine. Does that mean we just grow human medicine on Mars because it's harder to get, we're protected? Or does she mean to say that this is one of our many farms where we grow it? I don't know. But it's something I'm looking into. Something else that we're mentioning in here was uh, when Bishop was throwing out a psychic shout. They said that we got the cuckoos, step for cuckoos, everywhere. Antenna. Acting like an antenna. Right now the girls are across the globe. How many girls? We know that there's like thousands of them in that Greg Pak story. Phoenix End Song or War Song. One of the two. Probably End Song. Because of that... They, they could mean like a lot. But in House of X and Powers of Ten, Sophie and Esme, who are the dead ones, I retract that because I'm not sure which ones are the dead ones. But I mean the ones that were dead at the time I checked and I'm like, yeah, they're dead and now they're back. So those two are resurrected. So there are five confirmed uh, Emma Frost little clones, but there could be more than that antennaed around the globe. Um, they're gonna find out. Great artwork. That Kate is dead, quote-unquote, and that's it. From 1981 all the way to now. And, you know, it was, it was nice having her. Of course, she's not actually dead. But they're gonna tell Bobby. And that's his ex. He shares love for Kate Pride. And he goes into full-on horror, mo horror movie mode in here. Anything you've ever seen... In the Immortal Hulk, doesn't match up to what Stefano Caselli executed here in this comic. His artwork was great. Even in the panels where there's no words, what does that mean? There's a string, this vine, that's Krakoa. That is the vine of Krakoa. Only mutants have access to that. And uh, Bishop is thinking now. He does say kill is confirmed, that's all he says, but... Yeah, and there's a moment in here where he says, Yo, if you're actually watching my brain right now, now's a good time to tune out. It's about to get gruesome. That was great characterization of Bishop. And I still don't forgive you for traveling timelines to try to kill Hope Summers. But good job. Um, horror. Wow. Iceman is out here ready to destroy any human. And... Um, Bishop again is going to ask him, Iceman, to stop. I like that he shivered when he said it. I also like that he called him by his code name of Iceman, because when we're on missions, it's not Bobby anymore. Another moment in here, which is just great superhero in this. I feel like every time I turn a page, we get more. Um, Storm and Emma Frost are going to have a little bit of a, of a, of a heart-to-heart. -heart. She's going to transfer over that good feeling memory when Cyclops returned and she found him resurrected. Because she's having good moments. Like, that's something you do when someone goes through loss, is you try to cheer them up. However, we're reading a superhero comic. So Jerry Duggan over now, right now, he said, I'm going to superhero fi this. I love that. I love, even like when you're just at home and these two superheroes are talking. Remember the scene of Iceman and Wolverine in X-Men 2, where he's babysitting the X-Men and he's got a beer gives him the beer and Bobby knows what to do. He kind of cools it up. I love that. It's just a normal moment of I need a cold beer, which is something that everyone wants a cold drink. And we're using the superhero-ness aspect and we're integrating that into our normal storytelling. Lovely. So I just, it blew me away when Storm and Emma Frost communicated with each other and used their superhero-ness to, to enhance my experience. Now we get to Krakoa. Who the hell are these guys? Who are these dudes in white? These butlers? They're not mutants. They're not a bunch of multiple mans. Who in the blue hell are they? And why are they in Krakoa? I don't like that. Sebastian Shaw is the worst. Worst villain. I can't stand this guy. I he, he, Let's take out Sabretooth and put Sebastian Shaw down there instead. Worst villain. So good job by Jerry Duggan by getting that across. This little Lockheed is, is alive. Breathing fire. Oh, the Red Diamonds. I did read one where it made me think of Eye Boy. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who are the grossest mutants of them all? 
No, not the Morlocks. Don't punch down, Muties. Well, it's not for me to say, but keep your eyes on a swivel, and you may spot them when you think you're seeing double. Me speculating that's got something to do with Eye Boy. Uh, you know what's funny? This is the the 20th time. There, there have been 20 of these red diamond sinister bar sinister things. And no one who I watch on YouTube has debunked them. Maybe the Twitter community has, which I'm not too active, but you can still follow me on Twitter because I made a Twitter. Um, maybe people are figuring out these kind of secrets, these red diamond secrets. But for the most part, it's much like the Krakoan language. It's cool if you want to learn it, but not really utilized by the writers to make you want to figure it out. It could be used better. They're, they're doing a good job with white pages in general, but the theme, this, this red diamond thing, isn't popping. The book, though, was phenomenal. Edgar Delgado doing the colorist, since I'm mentioning all the creators. Um, good job, Marvel. That's why you're kicking ass, and then, no, I'm not going to take a low blow. I kind of did, but I just stopped myself. That's me showing restraint. Um, yeah, go watch the videos that popped up on the side of this review. Bye.